Today's video contains spoilers for the most recent episode of The Mandalorian. Hey guys, this is Zachariah Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. The most recent episode of The Mandalorian, that's chapter 13, The Jedi, name dropped a Star Wars character known as Grand Admiral Thrawn. Although many Star Wars Expanded Universe fans, i.e. fans of things outside of just the movies, are already familiar with Thrawn, the vast majority of Star Wars fans are not. So I thought today it would be fun to examine the character of Thrawn, both where he exists out of universe, why he's important from that perspective, but also the character's lore and what we can expect if he appears in The Mandalorian or another Star Wars TV show or piece of media. So I'm going to structure this video as if I were talking to a very, very patient friend or family member who knew nothing about Thrawn but was interested in the character after hearing his name in the last episode. That being said, I do think this will still be enjoyable if you've got some degree of knowledge about the character or even if you're very familiar. This should be a good recap. So it all starts in the early 90s, 1991 to be exact, and this is an interesting time for Star Wars. 1991 was almost a decade since the last film in the original trilogy, and was almost a decade away from the prequels. So we're in a sort of dark zone where interest in Star Wars is certainly not at an all-time high. However, 1991 saw the publishing of the first part of arguably the greatest Star Wars book series of all time, the Thrawn trilogy. Book one was called Heir to the Empire and began a really phenomenal story set after the original trilogy as the New Republic, which is led by Luke, Leia, and Han and features many of the characters that we know and love, faces off against Grand Admiral Thrawn himself. Now, Thrawn would die in the final book of the trilogy, The Last Command, but the Thrawn trilogy would serve to kickstart the Star Wars Expanded Universe with literally hundreds of books, comics, video games, and more, consumed by eager Star Wars fans. Now, that's not only because of the Thrawn trilogy, and the Thrawn trilogy was not the first thing in the Star Wars Expanded Universe, but it was a major factor of the revitalized Star Wars interest. So although Thrawn died in The Last Command, he was still one of, if not the, most famous Expanded Universe characters, and would appear in numerous books, many of which told his rise to power or his time with the Empire. I'll talk about what Thrawn did and why he was so popular, the basic background of the character in just a minute, but eventually the Star Wars Expanded Universe as it then existed was decanonized as Disney purchased Lucasfilm in the Star Wars brand, and thus Thrawn and his stories were made non-canon, i.e. they didn't officially count as part of the universe anymore. Thrawn was brought into the new Star Wars canon as a major antagonist for the final two seasons of Star Wars Rebels, the animated TV show, and has also also been featured in a number of books, including a dedicated trilogy which has already been finished, and another trilogy set in the pre-Empire days called Thrawn Ascendancy. Thrawn disappears at the end of Star Wars Rebels, and although it was pretty obvious that a character of his importance alongside Ezra Bridger would not be killed off screen, this is the first canonical mention of him being alive since the finale. So that's Thrawn's out-of-universe persona. What's his lore? How does he work in universe? Universe, what do you need to know about Thrawn should he appear in live action? Well, when it comes to backstory especially, there is a distinction between canon Thrawn and Legends Thrawn, but when it comes to characterization, they're very, very similar. Thrawn is an incredibly dangerous enemy. I would say Thrawn is the most competent enemy in Star Wars history, but though competent, he's not usually cruel like the Emperor. He's not necessarily evil either. Now, depending on who writes Thrawn, there's a bit of wiggle room here, but Timothy Zahn especially, the author who created Heir to the Empire, the Thrawn trilogy, and of course the character himself, has generally written Thrawn as an authoritarian, but not someone inherently evil. In the late era of Star Wars Legends and in Star Wars canon books, Thrawn is basically somebody who likes peace and security in the galaxy, and he sees the Empire as the best way to achieve those means. Arguably though, that's not Thrawn's most important aspect. His really defining feature 
here is his intelligence and his status as the greatest military strategist in Star Wars history. Thrawn is nearly unbeatable, and in Star Wars Legends and Canon, I can't think of a single fair fight that he's lost. Thrawn is usually defeated by unexpected happenings, things that he just could not have predicted, or, well, treachery. How is Thrawn so good? Well, he's got incredible analytical skills. He uses evidence and hints in his environment to predict the movement of his enemies in a way that borders on the supernatural. Thrawn's most common method of prediction and the one that is most well known to fans of the character is his use of art. Thrawn will examine the art of a civilization or an individual and use it to figure out aspects of how that person or society operates. He then uses what he learns to take advantage of an enemy in combat. In Heir to the Empire, for example, when fighting a New Republic task force, Thrawn identifies the commander as an Elaman and uses a technique called the Marg Sable because the Elaman species is particularly vulnerable to attacks with an unstructured profile. Thrawn's big thing is that to defeat an enemy, you must know your enemy. Art is one way of doing so, but the character is also incredibly, incredibly observant and perceptive. He's written very much like a Sherlock Holmes character, and there's usually a Watson as well to help us, the reader or viewer, understand what's going on through his mind. There have been various Watson characters throughout Thrawn's expanded universe appearances. I'd say the most famous one, though, would be Captain Pelion, who was Thrawn's second-in-command during the Thrawn trilogy. Thrawn, by the way, is a Chiss, a blue-skinned, red-eyed alien from the Unknown Regions. His full name is Mithra Nuroto, and the fact that he is an alien serving within the Empire shows just how competent and deadly he is. With the Empire in both Legends and Canon being incredibly xenophobic and humanocentric, Thrawn's skills, I would argue, don't just manifest during individual battles, but are even more prominent when it comes to Thrawn waging a war or a campaign against another individual or faction. Thrawn frequently uses feints and traps to move an enemy into position without them even realizing what's going on. Conversely, he usually is able to identify traps as well, so he makes his enemies look very predictable while generally avoiding attacks against him. And I think that gives us a good time now to talk about the Thrawn trilogy, the original campaign, the three books from Star Wars Legends that introduce the character. Now again, those aren't canon, but they are fairly illustrative of even the Thrawn that we know today. So the Thrawn trilogy is all about a war that Grand Admiral Thrawn waged against the New Republic. He sort of takes on the role of a rebel, because there are much fewer Imperials at this time, especially in his fleet, and he's fighting against the vast New Republic. We see things that he does in Book 1 get paid off later on, and he uses really weird technology like cloaking and cloning, things that were forgotten or misunderstood as a way to surprise his enemies. Thrawn, despite having much less forces than the New Republic, essentially cripples them, and he actually outmaneuvers even Admiral Akbar throughout the entire campaign and is ready to deliver a killing blow at the final battle, the Battle of Bilbringi, before he's assassinated by his bodyguard. Later Expanded Universe content would talk about how Thrawn was extremely close to Emperor Palpatine and played a major role in not just the later Thrawn campaign, but in preparing the galaxy for a number of threats. Thrawn created the Empire of the Hand in the Unknown Regions, which was essentially a second smaller empire which could be a buffer against threats from the outside. Within the Empire of the Hand was a Thrawn clone, and he set up many other contingencies, including embedded sleeper agents across the galaxy and more. Thrawn wouldn't come back to life because the clone would be destroyed, but even the mere thought of him returning to the galaxy almost crippled the New Republic, and the events there can be seen in the Thrawn duology. Thrawn was introduced to the Empire as an exiled member of the Chiss Ascendancy, and that's true in Star Wars canon as well. His origin story and his introduction into the Empire is very, very similar. However, recent novels have changed that slightly, with Thrawn not being exiled, but willingly leaving the Chiss and sort of embedding himself in the Empire. A lot of the Thrawn content in canon has been about Thrawn in his years with the Empire, and remember, Thrawn disappeared before even the Battle of Yavin. So whether he will take up a position as a warlord now that the Empire and Palpatine is gone is 
sort of up in the air. My guess would be probably we see in the most recent episode of The Mandalorian that the magistrate is working for him and the magistrate explicitly is somebody meant to accumulate vast resources. So I think best guess is that Thrawn is building himself back up for another campaign or something similar. Ahsoka is looking for Thrawn because where Thrawn is, Ezra is, or at least she can find out the fate of Ezra, who is the main character from Star Wars Rebels. But my speculation is that Thrawn is also working with Moff Gideon, and if you're interested why, I put out a video on that yesterday detailing all the evidence, and I do think it is fairly likely. But yeah, just to summarize, Thrawn is, if not the, one of the most famous and well-loved characters from the old Star Wars Expanded Universe. He's been re-canonized now for some time, and is pretty similar when it comes to characterization. Thrawn's a Chiss, an alien from the Unknown Regions. He is incredibly, incredibly intelligent. He's arguably, actually, I wouldn't even say arguably, he's easily the greatest military mind in Star Wars history, and I'd say he's the one enemy above all else, perhaps the Emperor excluded, that you would not want to go up against or draw the attention of. The thing about Thrawn too is in Star Wars Legends at least, we see what he can do with limited resources in the Thrawn trilogy and that seems like it will be relevant to the situation he's in currently. But guys, that's all we have for now. If you want to learn more about Thrawn, again, I highly suggest you check out the original Thrawn trilogy. You can find it on Audible. It's been completely remastered with Star Wars voices and sound effects. You can use my Audible trial code, audible.com slash Eckhart Slaughter, or you can just rent the books as well from your library. I guarantee if you read the Thrawn trilogy, you will understand why. To me, it's probably my favorite thing that came out after the original trilogy, and that includes movies, video games, and anything else. The Mandalorian is probably number two, with Revenge of the Sith up there as well, so I speak very highly of it. I think you guys will enjoy it too. Until then though guys, have a good one, be safe, let me know any questions down below, and may the Force be with you.